Welcome to Twisted Monday, live on Twitch for the first time. And of course, for this special occasion, I had to do my favorite game in the series as its most important character, Sweet Tooth. Surely we all know why Sweet Tooth is the most important character, but that won't really come up in this playthrough. For now, we're just gonna enjoy this uh, murder clown. Look at him, a familiar face. You know him, you love him. For some reason, he's incredibly vile. In fact, if we uh, read the manual, he's much, much worse than you might have realized. So let's read the manual. Get a full eyeful of uh, the game's creator's personal OC and what his whole deal is. Gotta use the correct stick to navigate this screen, but here we go. Sweet Tooth. Driven by Sweet Tooth. We know it's, it's Needle's Cane, but the game doesn't say that for some reason. It's hidden in a couple of uh, newspaper clippings that will flash by the screen very briefly. The first time Sweet Tooth killed someone, he didn't even flinch. He did it as skillfully as a trained surgeon and without regret. Without regrets. After the first one, it was obvious that he had found his calling in life. Sort of like uh, John Wayne Gacy, actually. Which is another person you would not want to associate yourself with. But here we go. Beloved Sweet Tooth. An analog for John Wayne Gacy in many ways. He quickly developed an insatiable thirst for blood. Sometimes his victims were meticulously hunted down, but most were randomly chosen and just unlucky to have crossed his path. No one was safe. And his vehicle, the Tasty Treats ice cream truck, not actually called Sweet Tooth in this game. This ice cream truck's whimsical nature hides the truck's true function, a place for Sweet Tooth to commit his treacherous acts. He's betraying people in addition to murdering them. Telling them that he's going to give them ice cream and then uh, doing horrible violence to them. Guess so. Uh, then we get to this part that I alluded to in the Let's Play, but... Its appearance makes it easy to lure his most innocent victims. And more often than not, the freezer is used to store other items besides the frozen treats Sweet Tooth sells. The truck's heavy control and slow speed are all set by the devastating nature of its special attack. No mention of the fact that the ice cream truck is actually a bipedal mech. Why would you want to mention such a thing? Couldn't possibly be important. And that's the backstory for Sweet Tooth. Mass murderer Three of children. The so, uh, content warning as we go through the cutscenes. Also, flashing images warning, motion sickness warning, everything warning for the Sweet Tooth story. Shut up and bleed, you motherfucker. But, no profanity warning. Don't worry about that. Maybe it was my fault. We're gonna keep it clean in that regard. problems to worry about. The old man's curse was beginning to piss me off. But then one day, he showed up. Calypso, he called himself. It was a stupid name. I wanted to kill him there and then, but he made me an offer. Flashing he images aren't as bad as I expected. I think it's the middle cutscene where it gets really Nine Inch Nails music video on this whole thing. Bring an end to the curse. No more headaches. As much as I had those old urges of mine, I kept them to myself for the moment. There was a bit of a flash. I figured I'd play along with this little game. After all, I could always kill him later. Spoiler alert there, Sweet Tooth. Yeah, yeah, this game is more tasteful than Postal. <laughs> you can always say that. No matter how bad a game is, it is more tasteful than Postal. And, yeah, even old uh, Twisted Metal Black surpasses that criteria. 
But it's a very early 2000s portrayal of serial killers. Where they're just like spooky goths who are also like dangerous but romanticized. Which is not a good way to portray serial killers. It's like the John Wayne Gacy that Sweet Tooth is suspiciously similar to is a very, very unsavory human being. I wrote about a bunch of serial killers when I did the Manhunt Let's Play. And I had to sanitize the hell out of all those stories. Because those stories are unspeakably horrible. And I won't be speaking of them now, but rest assured, serial killers are uh, irredeemable. The worst people who have ever lived. By a wide margin. Sweet Tooth is one of them. But, uh... He's somewhat lovable, which is actually kind of worse than he be so likable and charming and well portrayed. And look at this. He's a clown mech. It's delightful. The head actually follows the nearest enemy. Even Twisted Metal has that feature, which Nintendo patented. Oh, there goes my special. Okay. As long as you land at least 10 of the 20 missiles, you've gotten your money's worth out of the special. Because the 10th shot does extreme bonus damage. Might even be a programming error, because the Zoomy missiles only fire 10 shots, and if you land all 10, you get a huge dam damage bonus. And it says 10 out of 10 landed. Sweet 2 Special has the same 10 out of 10 image on the screen. And it gives you the bonus damage, but it's not 10 out of 10. It's 10 out of 20. So, in theory, you should not get that bonus damage, but you do. Making Sweet 2 Special that much better when it's already maybe the best special in the entire game. And there goes our plane. It has definitely caught fire. And uh, let's watch it crash. That's what we're all here for. I might miss it. There it goes, spiraling out of control and right into the ground. Several months pre-9-11, folks. <laughs> Um, I just learned that if the plane lands on somebody when it crashes, that person will die and you'll get an on-screen bonus for crashing a plane into them. I only just learned that because the chances of that ever happening are infinitesimal. How did anyone discover that that's a thing, much less, like, actually invoke it to have it occur? even a single time in history, but there you go. Maybe if you're playing like two players, you could have someone freeze a target right in the spot where the plane's going to land, since it lands on the same spot every time. But you really, really have to go out of your way to make that sort of thing happen. Even if you did everything right, the odds that it would actually occur very, very, very low. Yeah, Darkseid has a particularly fantastic special. Which can be extremely damaging, but it is rare that it actually is. And it is also difficult to use because it will frequently cause you to take damage when you use Darkseid's special. You are not invulnerable to damage, you just take slightly less while you are charging headlong into opponents. It is more beneficial to the AI. But it is still really, really cool. One of the best design specials in the game, that's for sure. We saw a lot of Crazy 8 special in a recent playthrough. It's fantastic. I still love it. It's the best thing about Crazy 8. Sweet Tooth 
is like faster than Crazy 8, it has much higher armor than Crazy 8, and has a better and easier to use special. Because Sweet Tooth is absurdly imbalanced. It's still perfectly reasonable to beat Sweet Tooth. He's not like a mini boss like he has been in other games, but he's distinctly better than all the other vehicles. Maybe not all of them, but certainly most of them. My weapons bay is full, so I should probably start uh, shooting people. They're not going to make it easy, though. Especially not Mr. Grimm. Let's leave Mr. Grimm out of this. Go for... the more reliable kills. Try to use my shield there, but... Using your shield, in this game in particular... Quite a challenge. Really seems like this is the one that made them realize... Okay, we gotta do something about energy moves. Because this game is meant for hardcore game playing, like, very, very high skill ceiling. You're expected to take a lot of time to master everything they throw at you. By the way, someone blew up the, uh, the old smiling, grinning statue. So now we can climb up here. I wasn't anticipating doing that, but, uh, since we have the opportunity, might as well. We can even get the black cube. Yep. Here we go. Fun reminder of that secret area. I should really start using these. Gas cans will outright kill somebody if I actually land them. Don't even need to be bullseyes, but bullseyes would be nice. Feels like double or triple damage if you get a bullseye. And note the way the gas can appears on the vehicle. Slightly off to the left side. So we do have to compensate for that when we are trying to land a gas can. But it does put the attack low enough on the vehicle that it can bullseye any other uh, vehicle at point blank range. Whereas if we are firing it over the top of Sweet Tooth, we would simply shoot over the heads of anybody except, like, Manslaughter. So, good design choice, putting it here specifically. But a big part of playing this game is memorizing where every single missile fires from on your vehicle. Memorizing that for every single vehicle. Because it's different with each one. Right now, our power missiles are on the right. So we gotta compensate for that while we're aiming. Still miss all our shots. This is a super easy level, though. We have no chance of game over right here. Future levels, sure. Because this is a super hard game. Nice, simple introductory level. Mostly because there is like 10 health pickups scouted all over the place. And two full recharges, only seven enemies total. Attrition alone would get you through the entire group of enemies. Which is not to say that I've never came over in the junkyard. Even though it is leagues easier than every other level in the game. My first time playing the game, I could not beat it for the life of me. It took me probably over an hour to beat this level even one time. Grim might be going for a health refill. If he was, he couldn't master the platforming. Which is somewhat difficult. But no shame there, Grim. You still get punished for it, but... I won't humiliate you on top of that. 
Okay, Axel's being a pain. So we're actually gonna freeze him and then shoot him with as many misses as he can survive, which is not very many. But wants to trade zoomies. Not good enough. I have my double zoomies as a special. Uh, unlock items. That's right, I got a black cube. Sure, save them. Go nuts. Get punished with additional loading screens anytime we actually get one of our unlockables. Now we actually have to go to the freeway. For reasons that I will show off in like an hour and a half, two hours. But for now, we'll just enjoy the freeway. We should really have no roadblocks in this entire game. Sweet Tooth is simply too powerful. If you compare this to some of my previous playthroughs, this is going to go abnormally smoothly. This level, though, is a little on the dull side. The stadium area is uh, a good place to fight, but you're only going to get one or two enemies over there. I wish we could like stay locked on to a single opponent for the entirety of our special. It's apparently too much to ask most of the time. Ah, oh, well. The hospital is a terrible place to do anything. But it's not a very functional hospital. <laughs> it looks like it's in ruins before we even show up. A lot of enemies will try to get too close to you while you're firing your special. And then all they have to do is push slightly to your right side and then all the missiles will fly right over their head. You want to keep them at arm's length, which is generally easy to do, but when you're the only one that anyone is actually attacking, it becomes slightly more difficult. The fact that enemies only care about you is what balances Sweet Tooth out, and makes every other vehicle almost unplayable. An environmental attack. This level has an environmental attack? How did I get this pickup? Okay, well, let me fire the environmental attack. So, yeah, this level doesn't have one. Um, apparently, I brought it in from the previous level. I was pretty sure this game reset your inventory between levels. But shows what I know. Okay, there we go. The environmental attack is out of my inventory. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. This game is, like, very solidly built. I've never really found any glitches besides that weird cosmetic glitch that I showed off in a recent full playthrough of the game. But for the most part, you do not see glitches here. And I don't know what that was, so I guess it was technically a glitch. Probably wasn't intentional, regardless. There we go. Kill the yellow jacket. Use the light version of our special, which completely whiffed. I'm so used to doing the whole pray and pray thing when I have too many missiles to count. That a lot of my shots are just going to waste. And I scarcely care. I have a wealth of missiles. Waste them all if I want to. I'm a missillionaire. Get 
roadkill out of here as soon as possible. For not to die. And then. Ah, nine. One more, and we would have got a huge damage bonus. Uh, trying to see what equates to freedom here on our billboard. Buy bonds. Uh, how long has that billboard been up? Because this is supposed to be the year 2001. People sometimes say uh, this game predicted 9 11. <laughs> Like, there are billboards and the uh, final level that have, like, the Illuminati eye on them and shit. Uh, it's a bit of a weird conspiracy theory, but the Buy Bonds billboard uh, lends a little bit of credence to it. I believe uh, Blast Tyrant in the chat is referring to a input where you can trade all the weapons in your inventory for a full health refill. And I believe it also empties out your energy meter. I have never showed that off. And the input for it is fairly complicated. It is all four shoulder buttons plus I believe up, down, left, right. And holding all four shoulder buttons is also what you do to input the cheats for this game, like invincibility and whatnot. So in theory, trading your health for or weapons for health is a cheat. And it is fairly exploitable if you do it when you have no weapons. So, I don't know what to make of it. Because it's balanced. Like, you lose all your weapons and your entire energy meter, so you're defenseless for a little while. But the manual doesn't tell you how to do it. It seems like you're just not supposed to do it. So, I don't know. I've never had to do it either. But it is a good tool to have at your disposal. And honestly, if it's the sort of thing you rely on, no shame in it, because this game is ridiculously hard. Anything you need to do to get through it is a viable strategy. And that was the last two enemies, crushed like they were nothing. On to... I promised I show off the uh, environmental attack here in the downtown level. So, even though it's my least favorite level, here we go. Sweet Tooth further lamenting his flaming head. He loves to dish it out, but can't take it himself. Yeah, that's true. It's definitely comparable to using Minion Special. Trading your Weapons for health. Because it's a secret code, a fairly complicated one, but it is balanced within the rules of the game. It's not like something for nothing. And I do use Minion Special to excess sometimes. Like I said, whatever it takes. Get through twisted metal and experience it in whatever way you enjoy the most. I'm doing incredibly poorly so far. This is really the easier of the two levels that we just had a choice between. And yet, here we are.
Yeah, I should really test out weapons for health on the drive-in theater. That level is absurdity. But I'm not going to do the drive-in theater during this run. For my own well-being. We saw what happened the last time I did the drive-in theater with Warthog. Got stuck there for like half an hour. Sandwich. Dark side in on the bridge. Not finish her off though. There we go. Little fender bender. Just to take her out for good. Whatever it takes. Let's uh show this off. It shields your robot form. Before the robot has actually emerged, I found that amusing. Use both of my recharges after killing only a single opponent. special is like a better version of Outlaws, so we'll just stand there and chug away at him. Land every single one of my special missiles on old Axel. And fire my zoomies at nothing. Tragic. Definitely expect to die here. But I would like to do a bunch of damage before I do. That is my dying wish. Since it's not happening, I'll go up on this building and get a free health refill. If no one wants to fight me, kill me. So be it. Got at least 10 shots on Axel, which is all that matters. Head back up here. Get another black cube, I guess. Why not? Okay, maybe I won't. Maybe that's why not. Phase right through it. ATV is a joke character in the next game in Head On. Whereas Mr. Grimm is almost as strong as all the other characters. Just uh, much more difficult to use. I was really hoping one special would kill both those heavily damaged opponents. But no. So Axel needs to be frozen. Something. Just get dead. I'll machine gun you to death if I have to. And this thing. The environmental attack. This is what we're all here for. Let's actually head out to the main area so we can see it fire. Radical pickup is always good. Everyone's coming to join me, so here's the environmental attack. The heli attack. I think I saw it firing. It's a very awkward environmental attack, but it can be very, very powerful. There's no on-screen indicator of how many missiles are landing. But I have seen it just outright kill an off-screen opponent before. Yeah. 
apparently that's not gonna happen today. Not the sort of thing you can rely on anyway. As for available health refills, I don't think there are any. I never really noticed that when you hit a pedestrian, it makes like a flesh bone crunching sound. That's exactly the sort of attention to detail I would expect them to devote their effort to. In Twisted Metal Black. That's what this game is all about. Bone crunching. Tried to use my shield, but I didn't have enough energy for one thing, and the series of inputs is impossible to do when you're in enough of a panic. Lucky that Yellow Jacket just decided to sit there. Let me kill him. Uh, if we can get a reticle, we'll be good. We don't get a reticle, though. This level is great for the reticle. The whole layout of the level is perfect for abusing it. But now I need to do hit and runs and stuff. Since I'm on my last life. I haven't seen a health refill in, like, a really long time. Like a shockingly long time. We'll try the environmental attack again, because why not? But no turbos, no health refills. Not much of anything, defensively speaking. That's another reason this is my least favorite level in the game. What is going on here? That was weird. Mr. Grimm just shut down. Accepted his inevitable demise. Yeah, hate to see it. Cube is unattainable today. And Warthog also accepting death. No cube for us. Ah, well. I believe that one unlocks um, this level for challenge mode Minion Stadium. so that you can go to the stadium and fight regular enemies there. Have a little showdown. The Joker won last year's contest, but I'm not afraid. I'm even more of the Joker than the Joker is. They really should have just called Todd Phillips the Joker Sweet Tooth and made it about this murder clown. Arguably more of an iconic and embarrassing murder clown than even the Joker could dream of being. Um, there we go. There's the big guy. Spray him with missiles, because why not? Just a useless missile, uh, missile there. Shouldn't be down to life, so that's kind of a big problem. Oh, 
really feel like Minion should not be allowed to use free shots. Because he's fire themed. That's just my opinion, though. Just bitter by the fact that he is constantly freezing me. Maybe it would all be too easy if he couldn't use free shots. I doubt it, though. Need to find a way to shoot him in the back. Which is not going to happen anytime soon. Getting him to turn away from me also causes him to get really far away from me. Outside of attack range. There. Yeah. This attempt isn't happening. That's what I usually do with Minion. I throw myself at him. And, uh... If I don't get the shield down in the first life, I give up. However, the shield's down now, and I am Sweet Tooth, and an extremely overpowered vehicle, so... Maybe we keep at this one. Don't give in to defeatism. Perhaps... I'm not the Joker after all, but my own overpowered OC. Um, we'll find out. Excuse me. Zoomy missiles are pretty good. Satellite might even be better on this particular level. But mostly we're just going to need our special and a little bit of help. Maybe I'll just go for it when I'm certain my shield is prepared. For now, he pretty much can't hit me. Such is the nature of the tracking on his missiles. And if you just run in circles, he won't be able to catch you. And 20 missiles. That'll do it. 16 even. On to a really grim, violent middle cutscene. Wonderful. I was out like the dying heartbeat. Little girl. Gotta think more like Sweet Tooth. It was the first time the Sweet Tooth can pull it out. I hadn't using a little bit of confidence. And, the and murder those OC powers. Those were some wonderful dreams. All my greatest achievements flashed before my eyes. The scale of what I'd done. The sheer volume of people I'd killed. It was breathtaking. But like all good things, it had to end sometime. When they captured me, the only thing I could think was, what a waste. All those people I hadn't killed yet. Come the night of my execution, there must have been over a thousand people gathered outside to watch me fry. I was upset about that. There should have been more. I remember there was this preacher in the observation room. I figured he was just some Bible thumper wanting to save my soul. But as it turned out, the old man had something else in mind. As I fried, he started screaming out like the freak he was. He asked God to curse me, to burden me forever with the flames of hell. Less than a minute to kill three police officers and get my mask back on. I never used to believe in curses, but it's been three months since that night, and the pain gets worse every day. 
So let me tell you something, boys and girls. I sure as hell believe in curses now. Weirdly fantasy-esque sort of storyline there. One of the least, like, down-to-earth and realistic stories in the entire game. And it is Sweet Tooth's. It also has, like, this non-canon version of the Preacher. When we see the actual Preacher's story, it is basically incompatible with everything Sweet Tooth says about him. So Sweet Tooth might be sort of an unreliable narrator. It's been suggested sometimes that Sweet Tooth's head is not actually on fire. It's just a representation of his madness and his constant desire to kill. Like a more literal version of uh, Cage's story, where Cage just feels anguish and isn't sure why. This is a, like, representational thing thereof. But more likely, it's literal. It's literal fire on literal Sweet Tooth's literal head. One down. But if I don't survive, it will not have been worth it. level is such a tough nut to crack. You have to do just ridiculously good at every phase of the entire level. Great equalizer of a level, this thing. For some reason, the health refills are respawned. Who knows why? Oh, and as for uh, Minion himself, I would definitely say that as a boss fight, pretty much all the boss fights in Twisted Metal 4 are even more imbalanced than that one. It's just that the AI in Twisted Metal 4 is so bad that you're never really in danger. So they pumped up the stats on all the boss vehicles so much to compensate. For the fact that they couldn't really program reasonable bosses. Everyone's good and beat up. Love to see it. But again, it will all be for naught if I don't get some kills. Enemies are exceptionally dangerous when they are at very low health. They really just become like cornered rats. They'll tear you quite violently in their death throes. Yeah, Sweet Tooth's entire story is to be taken with a grain of salt. Could easily all be lies. Or at least his own extremely flawed perception. Here in the Dark World, because, yeah, the Dark World. Not the most realistic world. For some reason, the cartoon world is the actual real world of Twisted Metal. Breeze Spectre. I can hit her with my entire special and she'd be almost dead. But you can't freeze Spectre. What do you think this is? We 
We did get a good sampling of Sweet Tooth's acting, portrayed by, um, what's that guy's name again? I've said it so many times, and it still slips my mind sometimes. But whatever his name is, a really, really fantastic portrayal of Sweet Tooth. And we just learned some stuff about the Twisted Metal TV series. Which is that Will Arnett will be the executive producer and the voice of Sweet Tooth. Which is fantastic casting. J.S. Gilbert, yeah, that's uh, the guy who's Sweet Tooth in this game. But in 2022, Will Arnett is taking his place. Similarly deep guttural voice. Clearly hacked to bits by smoking or something, but equally fitting for the character. And that information has been out there since, like, February of 2021, and for some reason I just didn't realize it until just a couple weeks ago. But it's basically his TV series, at least from a uh, financial perspective. I believe the role of Sweet Tooth is a fairly small one. But nonetheless, it'll be good to hear Will Arnett again as one of our favorite characters. Yep, Bojack as Sweet Tooth. A just collision of worlds that I am not prepared for, but I am actually, for the first time, excited about it. And that's not all we learned about the TV series, because that, like I said, that information's been out there for a long time. What we actually learned, announced in like mid-May, so like two weeks ago, is that one of the leads will be uh, Stephanie Beatriz from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, like the best actor on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So I love her, very excited to see her work. She's playing an original character to the Twisted Metal series. But she'll be starring alongside someone who is portraying John Doe from Twisted Metal Black. So the story will focus on John Doe, but Stephanie Beatriz will be like the second lead. I think she's like a wisecracking sidekick to John Doe. Because apparently, they also announced this, the tone of the series will be that it is primarily a comedy. Like an action comedy, but set in the Twisted Metal Black world. Which is ill-suited to comedy, most would say. When I heard it was going to be a comedy, I figured they're going for the colorful world for once. Finally. I am so excited for a return to the colorful world, but no. We're sticking with the Dark World. I love the Dark World. This is my favorite Twisted Metal game. Th this is not the only Twisted Metal. <laughs> Go back to the Colorful World. God damn you. But no. John Doe and Agent Stone will be the villain. Or at least one of the villains. Which is fitting, I think. I believe those are the only returning characters that have been announced. Oh, there's another actually really important one. It was um, Nev, Can Nev Campbell. <laughs> she has been cast as a recurring character. Not one of the actual stars, but a character who will appear in multiple episodes. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, god damn it. Because Nev Campbell is dream casting for... Raven. And I don't want Raven to be in the TV series, but Nev Campbell is confirmed to be playing Raven. So, that should be something. <laughs> I love Raven, but come on. She's a nothing character. We don't need to see more of Raven. 
but we're gonna. They put their biggest star in that role, so... Whenever Raven's not on screen, everyone will be asking, Where's Raven? Start making your That's So Raven memes right now, because they will be relevant in roughly one year's time. Unfortunately, yeah. Let's just set off a blip attack. Hopefully someone is somewhere above me to take damage from that. I have three environmental attacks. Let's just burn them all. Someone's up there. Uh-oh. Wasted my special. Because I was firing off blips completely randomly. So yeah, as stated, the TV show does sound like it is going to be an absolute mess, totally unfocused, like a collision of the colorful world and the dark world, with very little focus on anything besides fan service. For a fandom that doesn't exist effectively, like I am the fandom for Twisted Metal, and that is about it, but they're, they're going all in, for some reason. The fact that they have failed to excite me says volumes. However, learning that it's supposed to be a comedy and learning some of the casting of some of my favorite actors does significantly improve my perception of the TV series. So I am actually interested in it. Not sure I'll actually watch it, but it should be interesting if nothing else. Not an unmitigated catastrophe. And probably pretty successful, given the caliber of acting that they brought on. I have the armaments required to kill absolutely every remaining vehicle. But I need to not die in the process of using them. Warthogs down. Everyone is converging on my position, but I'm so heavily armed. There is little hope for them to defeat me. The one down. Who wants some? Um, you. Here we go. Everyone's good and dead. Real quick. Quite the finale for this extremely difficult level. I had a life left over. You don't see that often on the Prison Passage level. Now we go to either the Snowy Roads or the Drive-In Movie. Since I don't want to be here all day. Snowy Roads, it is. I should be able to handle this in a single playthrough. Whereas the Drive-In Movie would easily take many. Yeah, the prison just makes no sense in general. Like, I've always been fascinated by what they were thinking thematically with that level. Because why are you arrested? I mean, we know why. Twisted Metal is illegal. But how? And why were you arrested with your vehicle and with all the other contestants in the same area? It's the most reality-breaking level in the game. A game that has very little reality to it. But, like, the semblance of reality. They at least usually make you think they thought things through and had an idea in mind. Not so with the Prison Passage in particular. Special's so ridiculous that it killed Outlaw pretty much immediately. And our armor is adequate that we were able to get to a uh, recharge station with plenty of time to spare. Brimstone put one of his little mans on me. Right as I was transforming, 
and I wanted to see what would happen in that instance, but it was too chaotic. There were too many enemies lumped up. So I think the little man just exploded on his way over to me. But I want to see one of Brimstone's followers mounted on top of my mech. I think that would be very funny. Dark side destroyed somehow. It's probably something I did, but there's so much chaos right now. Who can tell? Not me. There's Roadkill. Ready to kill me at every turn. Not gonna do a roguelike today, just for future reference, because I have something planned for after we uh, complete this run. Something Twisted Metal related. Which will keep us going for full stream's duration. Okay, Roadkill has to go. Roadkill is the biggest problem in this game. Among the AI. And he's gone. All my dreams have come true. Now everyone is celebrating with fireworks. So proud of my achievement they are. Yeah, this game was definitely invoking a more realistic down-to-earth version of the Twisted Metal story. Of, like, what could happen if, like, a guy with a lot of resources and a severe sadistic streak just, uh, gathered murderers and made them duke it out in public. It's definitely weird, but only occasionally veers into supernatural. Sweet Tooth Story is by far the most supernatural in the game. Maybe not by far, but... Certainly among the most supernatural in the game. Grant me that, okay? Everyone's arguing with me in my head exclusively. <laughs> Truly, I am the sweet tooth here. Get Raven on out of here. Spoiler alert for the TV series. Raven is probably going to explode when they can't afford to bring her on for season two. And... On to uh, the last enemy left music. All the music for this level is really good. The music for this whole game is really good, but it's not really in contention as best game soundtrack in the series because it's so different from all the other games that you can't really compare it one to one. Nonetheless, it is a fantastic soundtrack for this game. It suits it all beautifully. Did not save before beginning this level, so if things go awry, I'll simply be on the hook for losing all my lives before I can reset. And things can go awry here. I haven't game over it yet, but this is another very, very, very difficult level. So if I'm gonna game over, it'll be either here or the prison passage. And it wasn't the prison passage. So clearly, we owe y'all some game overs right about now. I both love and hate that Darkseid can backfire for special. Because it is the silliest thing in this game. At no point are we going to be, like, down and out for this playthrough. Sweet Tooth is so powerful that even if I have one life and no resources left over, I can still pull it out. 
Not so much if Roadkill persists, though. Roadkill's gotta go. Roadkill is the mini-boss of this game. Even AI Sweet Tooth is harmless compared to Roadkill. Because Roadkill just always has a max charge special. Anytime you're chasing him around, that special is being charged. And then he whips around at the perfect time. Hits you with just so much damage. More than you could hope to handle. I feel like they should have made Roadkill, like, um, Crazy 8. When the AI uses Crazy 8, it never uses the upgraded special. It just sits there and zaps you with a laser beam. Which is fairly pathetic compared to most specials. But no. Roadkill has to be the most efficient that anyone could possibly be with that special. There we go. Outlaw took the uh, homing part of the special, and I just barely made it on <laughs> to the church. Blessed. Hashtag blessed. Oh, come on. He fired the power missile around a corner, so I could not have hit him. camera cannot handle me right now? Like, what is even going on? That particular angle is really hard for this game, it turns out. This level gets so much easier when the enemies dwindle. So right now it's chaos. Everyone is firing everything at me at all times. And it is unsustainable for me. There's Roadkill if he gets in front of me. I'll hit him with my entire special. He didn't die though. Once I'm rid of him, this will be a lot easier. Uh, he's in full runaway mode. There's Roadkill, back for more. Didn't have enough left in him to do anything. That's the biggest problem solved. I need to get off that hill so the camera doesn't go berserk again. And everyone is inside the plane fuselage. Just hanging out. All right. Stay too close for the satellite missile to hit me. Do a little bit of escaping, but there's no health refills. There's two health refills, but one of them is being dangled over the edge for long enough to transform into a machine gun upgrade. Can't get that. Look at that, I basically couldn't miss. 
such a good special. It's good at like every range, in every situation. It's too damn good. And I'm still down to my last life with four enemies left. Goes to show how hard this game is. It is kind of hard to, like, focus on a single target for the entirety of your special. Since it lasts for so long, you're likely to switch targets in the middle. Which sort of technically weighs some of it. Although whoever receives that 10th missile takes the bonus damage. Really, the 10th missile is the only one that matters. Axel's down. I think he got one last retaliatory hit on, on me, but worth it to get rid of him. Tenth missile is the only one that matters. However, cost me all of my hell. Kill Brimstone there. So, we're going on a little adventure to get our health back. You notice when you're playing a Sweet Tooth that a lot of enemy attacks, their effect is to bounce the front end of your vehicle straight upward, which throws your aim off, causes your missiles to fire directly into the sky. That is one of the few things that will completely waste your special, because rarely is there an enemy in the sky. That's one of the things that balances Sweet Tooth, is basically any hit you take. That means all of your special missiles have gone to waste. Just need this. Now we can fight Crazy 8. Inside in green health. And I'm gonna really wreck his day. I hope. Okay, I only partially wrecked his day. But it was enough. Boy, was it ever enough. No game overs on this level either. That's just one level remaining for me to try and get through without any game overs. The final boss. Warhawk. Somehow it took this murder helicopter to capture a sweet tooth in the first place. Sweet tooth being a guy. Required this whole big monstrosity of a vehicle just to snatch up off the street. But they took him alive somehow. Further indicating that this is just Sweet Tooth's fantasy of what happened. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Sweet Tooth's fantasies do have tremendous power in this world. still. Probably not real. This whole boss fight is a huge gimmick. It is somewhat difficult, but 
really it's just all about that gimmick. And whether or not the AI feels like playing along with the gimmick. Which, right now, they don't. There. One more. And then we can kill the boss. And... almost. Everything's in position. If Warhawk doesn't move... There we go. Get him with a special. Just stand here and duke it out with him. For I am Sweet Tooth. I am on par with your final boss. Your final boss is a coward. And I shall crush them. Ridiculously overpowered character. Super fun to play as. This is a fantastic starting vehicle. If you're no master of the game, start with Sweet Tooth. You'll have a grand old time. But yeah, that's the final boss. Didn't even put up a fight. On to Sweet Tooth's ending. We could probably all recited by heart by now. Always worth revisiting, though. The contest was over, so I went and saw Calypso. I asked him to make good on his promise, to bring an end to all the pain, to take away my curse. He offered me a vial. He said inside it held the blood of man who'd cursed me on the night of my execution. He told me if I drank... Warhog is kind of an irritating boss. Would be over. But a little bit ill-suited to the I nature of Twisted Metal, and a lot of vehicles simply cannot attack him because he's not touching the ground. And the curse would come back to haunt me. They have to use the pickups in the environment. So in some ways, that is kind of poorly designed. Seconds. Let's face it, boys and girls. But if you're Sweet Tooth, you're unstoppable. So it doesn't matter. I killed Calypso about as well as I ever killed anyone. Now that I'm free, I'm going to be the greatest of all time. I believe that image of Calypso getting his head chopped was initially Calypso getting his gut stabbed with that knife. And then for some reason they changed it in, in the final game. I'm not really sure why. But that's why when he's when Calypso is lying on the ground dead afterwards, his head is not chopped off. Because it was just supposed to be a gut stab. Yep, gotta skip this. Our fantastic ending sequence. Unacceptable for Twitch broadcasting purposes. And for YouTube, and for everybody. So, I just absolutely steamrolled that game. I apparently have gotten too good at it because I've been playing as the weaker characters. Who else have I done? Uh, there's Sweet Tooth. Uh, Warthog is pretty weak. All of our favorites. No Face is actually pretty strong, but situationally. Ditto Roadkill. And Mr. Krim. Yeah, they're all pretty strong characters who nonetheless can find themselves in situations where it's really, really hard for them to win. Yeah, Sweet Tooth's ending is really like, look at how badass this guy is. He's offered a bargain for the basically only time in the Twisted Metal Black canon. But he denies that bargain, because killing is too important for him. And like, why does Calypso, of all people, want Sweet Tooth to stop killing? Calypso loves killing. He loves killing so much that he started a murder contest. It's a weird-ass ending. A weird-ass story, entirely. But a good story. Very entertaining, in a sort of horror comic style. I always liked it, and the vehicle is fantastic 
frankly too good, but I love it. And I love Twisted Metal Black. And I've greatly enjoyed showing it off here. And of course, we're not done. It's only been an hour. So, I will be taking a break, and then there will be bonus content. I'm going to play the three levels that I did not play in the campaign. So, yeah, stay tuned. In a few minutes, I will come back. And we'll play, what is it? The Suburbs, the Highway Loop, and the Drive-In movie. Stick around if you want to see that. And if you're watching on YouTube, if you're not sure how Twitch works, you can uh, check out VODs of everything I do. So, you'll be missing this bonus content if you don't head over to my Twitch page. It's just that easy. I'm using my Twitch channel as a second YouTube channel right now. So, head over there. You can watch the bonus content that I'm about to do. You can watch... Um, my full playthrough of God of War, my ongoing playthrough of The Suffering. All sorts of great shit. Archived here forever. And maybe even tune in live for a future playthrough. For now, this concludes our playthrough. But do stick around. I am Fiendly, and I thank you for watching Twisted Monday.